So you work hard and earn what you get. It's right here, it ain't easy, you know what I'm saying? Break the sign in this society these days. Some of them lazy. Not mine, he's cutting the yard. Play football, run track, play basketball. Everything he got, he earned. He got all types of toys. And he don't play. Say, son, he's the yard cut this morning. I helped you out. You know what he did? Doing some boots. Doing, I don't know what kind of clothes he got on, but through that, whatever he got on, he got on. He ain't know he gonna get paid, but I'm gonna break bread with him. Because he earned it. You get what I'm saying? Stuff don't cut easy. You know what I'm saying? Look at my son. All by himself. All right. Motivate to chilling. Start shutting them down. Start telling them what they can't do. Start letting them know what they can do. You get what I'm saying? This is real life. This ain't cartoon, you understand what I'm saying? Look at this. That's something to be proud of, you hear me? Thank you, Chief. Jimmy Horn Jr. is from Sanford, Florida. In his earlier years, he played three sports. Basketball, track and field, and of course, football. Despite his name being Jimmy Horn Jr., many still believe that he is the son of Joe Horn, an American former professional football player who was a wide receiver in the National Football League. And at one time, it appeared that way on Google, but has since been corrected. Let's get this, Jay, let's get this. Jimmy Horn Jr.'s father's name is Jimmy Horn Sr. Jimmy Horn Jr. transferred from Lake Mary High School after his sophomore season. Jimmy played one season of varsity football for coach Eric Lodge at Seminole High School in Florida. He helped lead his undefeated team to the Class 8A state championship, becoming the first undefeated state championship football team in Orlando area history. In the state championship game, Jimmy led all receivers with seven catches for 74 yards. In his senior year, he had 42 receptions for 736 yards and nine touchdowns and added 29 rushes for 196 yards and three touchdowns accounting for 1,182 all-purpose yards and 12 touchdowns. Despite all of Jimmy Horn Jr.'s accomplishments, he wasn't heavily recruited out of high school. Many in his circle, including Coach Jerry Evans, the current running backs coach at Seminole High School, were contacting college coaches and asking them to take a look at the star receiver. Coach Derry Evans would send out regular tweets about the explosive player. Also, Joe Watson of Joe Watson Photography, who is responsible for many of the photos and videos of Jimmy Horn Jr. seen throughout Jimmy's Twitter page and also included in this player profile. Joe Watson does a lot more than take athletes' pictures. He also assists them during their recruiting process. FCS offers finally started to roll in, but still none from the FBS or Power Five. Chris Hayes wrote an article for the Orlando Sentinel on November 26, 2020, entitled, Overlooked Seminal Receiver Jimmy Horn Deserves FBS Offers. First-year Seminole coach 
Eric Lodge was quoted as saying, it's like all these guys at the FBS level, they want to know who else is recruiting him. Well, if you like him, offer him. Why does another school have to offer him to validate what you think? He's out here dropping SEC commits to their knees. DeLand has two players committed to Mississippi State, and they couldn't do anything with Jimmy, but it'll all work out for him. Jimmy Horn Jr. is quoted as saying, I broke my wrist, so that stopped a lot of things. With the coronavirus, it knocked out spring. Usually, that's when all the college coaches come to practice and check you out. So that really slows stuff down in recruiting. It made it hard. It is frustrating. I just trust in God. We've been telling college coaches about him. He just doesn't have that junior film, Lodge said. To me, it's kind of crazy. He's been one of our most valuable players. He's like Mr. Everything. We make a concerted effort to get him the ball. He's a great kid. He has grades. I can't say enough good things about Jimmy Horn, Lodge said. He's something else. I haven't seen a player that electric on the field in a while. He works his butt off, does anything the coaches want him to do. He's just explosive. Some highlights that look like Tyreek Hill in there. I was at the uh, Chiefs Bucks game a couple weeks ago, just watching Tyreek just run at a different speed than everybody else on the field. When when you watch uh, Jimmy's tape, he's running a different speed, different change of direction than everybody else on the field. And uh, also reminded me of uh, had some Sammy Watkins acceleration, change of direction, and burst uh, that I saw. And uh, so we decided a couple weeks ago uh, that he was oversign worthy for us, even though we were technically uh, full with our, our high school class. We offered him at the same time, literally while I was on the phone offering him, I think uh, Georgia was trying to beat through. They were offering him. And from that point on, it was, uh, it was like a year and a half's recruiting in two and a half weeks. He, he has the potential to – I don't know what the record is for touchdowns and all that in our school history, but that's the type of potential that this young man has. On December 19th, 2020, Jimmy Horn Jr. and his Seminole football team would remain undefeated to win the Class 8A state championship over Osceola.
Jimmy Horn Jr. won four medals at the 2021 Class 8A State Track and Field Championship. He was part of the state champion 4x100 meter relay that posted a time of 41.12 seconds to rank among the top 10 nationally. He won the long jump and finished fourth in the 100 meter and triple jump. Of me, yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah. this Michael, is so you know where Jimmy I Senior. Seen you on some of the Zoom calls and video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were coaching there, we were all recruiting, talking, and uh, that was something not not having the chance to visit and yeah. stuff like that to do it all on Zoom. But uh, we're gonna take care of this young man. He's he's gonna be good. All right, it's good he's to hear. Good one. you know that. And uh, proud to have him. Hey, how you doing? My name is Jimmy Horn Jr. I'm from Sanford, Florida. If you don't know where it's at, it's like 30 minutes from Orlando, Florida. Back home, not too many people make it out. I got in football when I was like seven years old in a community deep behind football, so they, have, they support everybody. Back home, you know, first thing they really ask me, like, what that college life about? The campus is about, I ride through on my scooter sometimes. I can see, like, everything getting built. It's gonna be soon, like, top notch most definitely, especially with the new indoor facility being built. That's good. I can't wait till that, but I don't even want to talk about it. When we got hurricanes and lightning and thunder, we got to shut everything down, go inside, do sprints in the locker room or something. <laughs> Horn with a spin move. Jimmy Horn with a spin. One of the positives about our room should be our depth. Look at the, the group in itself. There's some guys that are big, long guys, and you got the you know, smaller, faster guys like Jimmy Horn. You know, being able to cross the middle, and then we can run. You know, those guys are 23 miles per hour, 22 miles per hour, and being able to get vertical as well. So it's a good group. We just got to go pro uh, prove it on the field. Jimmy Horn Jr., he can fly. Jimmy Horn Jr., leaving everyone in his wake. Sometimes the best feeling is coming out that tunnel. That's really when you're coming out that tunnel, that's the best feeling for sure. Find and get Xavier Weaver involved. McLean, short set, got the slant over the middle of Torn. Across midfield, Horn down the sideline. Oh my, what speed! Yikes! And how about the timing of Timmy McLean delivering it on time? And this is how routes get broken open. The timing given to him on the run where he can make a guy miss, and now it's just a foot race to the end zone. Not a, a lot of people going to track down Jimmy Horn. It seemed like that crossing route was uh, it's 
been there all season. You finally were able to, to break one off. Yeah. It's been uh, you know, like, last week I had one the same rock. I got hit on it. But like I ain't let it fade me. I just came back this week. We we practiced it all week. It was, that look, it was the same look. We got it. We just made it happen. It's enough. When you caught it and turned up the field, when did you know you had a shot at getting to the, to the end zone? Uh, I had, I knew when I had first caught the ball. Cause when I knew when nobody was right there on the hitting, I was straight. As soon as I turned, I just knew when my speed kicked in. It was over with. The rest history right now. I already had a bad question, so I'm just going to follow up with another one uh, <laughs> earlier. Uh, I asked this to, to Ronnie Adams like five years ago. Clearly, I am not fast. How is it being that fast? Uh, I really don't even know, to be honest. I've been fast all my life. Too. That's true. <laughs> I've been fast all my life. I used to go to the neighborhood, race another kid. I ain't never been beat in racing in my life, like, like racing like side by side. It meant time I'd have been beat, but like, like growing up, like growing up as a kid, I always just race other kids for the fun and stuff like that. I just always been fast. So like I can't really tell you how I feel. It, just, it feels good. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good too. What resulted in your first career touchdown? Talk about how meaningful that is to you. Uh it's the first start to many. First start to many. You know. Like, that's all I can say really. First start to many. Coach Scott kind of got choked up talking about uh, the 16 seniors that were asked this week if they wanted to come back. He was uh, taking it back that everybody wanted to come back because they see the vision. Uh, you as a, a true freshman, you you bought into the vision when you signed here you know, 10 months ago. What's What's been just the message every single week, given everything kind of going on? It's just been like, the message that really been like, we said on the back of the shirt, if you said, embrace it, attack it, together. That's all the band. It's the same speech every week. We go go, we got to go out there and get it. And like everybody just stay together. And then we close, you know, it's all been the same conversations every week. So like everybody just see the future and the vision, like what's coming up next. That's about it. Question for Jimmy. Thank you. I never um, get on Twitter facts it's to, to a detriment of you know the companies that I work for. You Jimmy know, Horn Jr. on the return for USF, cutting it back. Horn, one of the fastest players on the team. The field has opened up. Hit the horn for Jimmy Horn Jr. Here we go, here we go. Coach Kalani, that's the first thing he said. We gotta get back to basics, fundamentals. And here we are, kickoff return to start the half. Remember last year, they started digging them way back, slowly but surely, but look, just the speed that he has, outrunning angles, and able to cut like that and you know, reverse field. This is a fast player, and he showed it just then. Trying to recapture that. Well, and we saw a little bit of Gary Bohannon in the quarterback run game on the last drive. We'll see if they feature more of it here. On second and nine, Bohannon fakes the handoff, hits Jimmy Horn Jr. He can fly. Jimmy Horn Jr. leaving everyone in his wake. Sound the horn for Jimmy Horn Jr. I'm Kaylee Cottrell, your Bulls insider, and today I'm talking to our wide receiver who's coming off a career game, Jimmy Horn Jr. Coming off a career game with eight catches for 180 yards and two touchdowns, including a 91-yard touchdown reception. What goes through your head during a play like that? I mean, a lot goes through my head during a play like that. It's from like catching the ball, knowing if I'm gonna get hit or not. But like once I know I'm not gonna get hit, and like I see open grass and nobody there to catch me, I just know it's my time to shine. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Now. After games like last week's for you, what do you reflect on when you look at the way you played? Uh, I mainly look at like I got to keep stacking like on top of them games. 
I just keep stacking up, keep mm -hmm. stacking up with my stats and stuff like that. Love it. Well, you now own two of the nine longest receptions in program history. What do those accomplishments mean to you? It mean a lot to me. I just want to keep doing it. Yeah. Keep earning those stats and keep breaking records because that was a goal as me for me when I was younger. Yep. Make good grades and great records. Amazing. Well, you are a force on the field. What's your biggest source of motivation? Um, it's a lot of, I, one, one of them, like mainly like my family, like my mom and all, my little sister, all my siblings, and then my pops and stuff like that. People that roll with me and help me get help. Nice. Well, you can see that motivation on the field. Where does the passion come from? Uh, being a person in my family, like, to get a chance to do a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like being in college, graduating high school and all type of things like that. Love it. Being the first to do stuff like that and be successful. Yeah. Well, talking about success, you are no stranger to being one of the fastest guys out there with your background in track and field, competing in the relay, the 100 meter, the long jump and triple jump. <laughs> <laughs> what what do you how do you think your background and your accomplishments in track and field has influenced your play? I mean it has helped a lot, but y'all probably won't believe this. I really didn't take uh track track and field serious for real. I really started running track but I mean like my, my middle school years I ran track, but I really was doing it just to do it because I was always fast. Yeah. And then like I ran it a little bit in my freshman year, I didn't run it my sophomore year. And then my senior year is when I really took track series a little bit. Started like running events like the 100 meter, yeah. long jump, triple jump, cause I was good at jumping, I got a, I got a good vert. Uh-huh, yeah. incredible. Well, I mean, you are so athletically diverse and it's always a pleasure watching you play on the field. Thanks for so, walking with me today. No problem. The rain is gone in the Tampa Bay area, making way for a Saturday night under the lights at Raymond James Stadium. Two teams looking for their first win of the season. The Howard Bison out of the MEAC and the USF Bulls in the American Conference. It's time for football in Tampa, Florida. And with that, we welcome you to Raymond James Stadium on a Saturday night. Alongside Lige Doosable, I'm Richard Cross. Thanks for joining us. Lige, two teams looking for that first win of the season. Losing is no fun for anybody. I mean, losing hurts, right? And all week long, you're thinking about that loss from last week. You're salivating, waiting to get back on this field. And both of these teams are eager to get that first win. USF offense, who found itself in a hole in a hurry last week in the season opener against BYU. Opening kick, and we are underway at Raymond James Stadium. Ball taken inside the five-yard line and returnable. And a big return for USF right out of the gate. Jimmy Horn with a really good return right there. Last week versus BYU coming out at half. 89-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Puts USF in good field position with that good return right there. That's Jimmy Horn Jr. that gets the first touch of the night for USF. First offensive possession will begin at the 35-yard line. As we see, Jeff Scott is in his third season as the head coach at USF. Just three wins over the first two seasons. One his first year, 2020, which was the COVID year. Two wins last season. And so you go, hey, there's a reason to be concerned. Jeff Scott made a commitment to USF. USF has made a commitment to him after last year's two-win season they extended his contract by two years out to a full five seasons. Some big plans on the horizon for the future of USF football, including an indoor facility and a big play here for the Bulls. Jimmy Horn Jr. carries it out close to midfield, gets all the way out to the 43-yard line on the first play of the drive. Welcome back. Bulls on the road this week. They're heading to Houston, and we've got two road games coming up, Temple and Philadelphia. After that, then the Bulls return home in a couple of weeks at Raymond James Stadium. Jimmy Horn is with us, Bulls wide receiver, kickoff return man as well. Numbers are going up for you. You feeling good? You're healthy? Things are kind of coming together for you, it seems. Yes, sir. Things are starting to come together for me. Tell us a little bit about this offense now and the changes, if any, that you expect with Catravis taking over at quarterback. 
I mean, with Gary going down, you know, he was a big impact onto the offense because he's a starting QB, but it's always been like that next man mentality. So I expect Trey to have the same standard as, uh, as uh, Gary. But I, I got faith in Trey, and I feel he's going to do good this game and for the rest of the season. Jimmy, uh, you, you've spoken about this in the past, about last year, you know, your physical talent was there. This year, a big difference in your study habits, your film watching. You've taken a next step as a player. Just what made you decide to kind of commit to that, and what difference has it made in what we see on the field, just the, the amount of work you put in off the field? I mean, it, it took a lot to, like, because, like, if you want to be great, you got to, like, do that extra stuff. You can't do, like, just, like, the regular stuff. Like, coaches would be, like, you can't watch you got to watch film more than one time you know what i'm saying so like last year i probably watch film when we get here and then, then that's probably the only time i watch it but since i started watching like on my own just like studying defenses learning like like what defense they go run getting familiar with like looks and stuff like that just helped me better my game so i could have a better route plan lining up against somebody your main contribution is catching passes but you had a pretty great moment returning kicks earlier this year take us through that play what does that feel like when you break into the open and you know nobody's gonna get you from behind i mean it's a good feeling because like once you like see like everything that's going on you be like okay y'all i'm gone i'm gone you see the crowd everybody yelling so like it's a good feeling do you think uh because of your speed obviously you're a deep threat um but do you see guys playing off you more respecting that speed when you when you line up are they conscious that you know if they make a wrong move that you can get by them do you see defenses playing you that way i see a couple of defense play like that cincinnati they pressed a lot that's the only team that pressed up a lot against me right now uh we expect houston to do a little bit of it but i'm not sure how they go come out because like with the uh with the injuries and stuff so I'm not sure how they go do it right now, but if they play up close, you know how that be. I got I got good speed, so you gotta respect it. Well, when you and Weaver are both healthy, and especially when you line up kind of side by side, that's a lot to handle for mm -hmm. an opposing secondary. How does he impact your game having him out there with you? Uh, Weaver, he takes a lot off me too. So like, and I know I take a lot off him too. So like. Defense got to like be able to prep for both of us, cause if you get, if you can't you can't stop both of us at the same time. Like either way, man, we were gonna make some shit. So is it like uh, Jimmy? Uh, it go from a fabulously successful high school program, won a state title, and you come to the college level, and it's different. It's harder. Competition's harder. What was it like transitioning? And you know, you used to be in the man in high school, and now you you have to kind of learn how to play college football. What was that like to kind of? you know take a few steps back and 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 learn how to get better at this level uh the only the one thing i could say like when i came to college i was kind of like okay i'm about to be playing against people that's way bigger because i know when i was younger my father used to tell me like as you get older the game get older people will get bigger faster and stronger and like high school man i ain't get out i came out of high school at like 150 so you know i went it was hard for me gaining weight so like I'm like, dang, I'm thinking college finna be like hard, hard. Like I ain't gonna be able to, I'm thinking everybody gonna end up being faster than me or something like that. But I know like with my speed, like my speed play a part of my game a lot too, which helped me with college. And like my freshman year to my sophomore year, it's like I learned the game better and just, yeah.
get rich to make a life worth living doing this or The biggest challenge for me, because when I was at USF, I could just hop in the car and drive up the road an hour and 30 minutes and slide it. But out here, you got to catch that flight back home and kind of far away from family. But I'm, on, I'm here on a mission, so I can't let nothing hold me back. Jimmy, I think people are curious. Uh, I haven't seen Shadur on TV, but not seen him against Power 5 competition, competition like you playing against USF. Is he ready for that jump? Is he a P5 QB? And Shadur is ready. Like, <laughs> Don't let that HBCU stuff fool you, cause yeah. when we was at uh, USA, we played Howard and thought Howard was about to be sweet. Like, them boys hit just as hard as these boys in Power Five, and some of them kids in HBCU could have played Power Five if they wanted to, but that's the route they want to choose. So, don't try to throw like them schools under the bus, cause they just as good as these players out here. So how, how is he that ready? Like, is it the arm, the head, every, every time it's everything? Yeah, Shador ready. He's smart and he got great accuracy, and like every time you throw the ball, it's on point. And if he mess up on something, he go tell you what he was thinking and how he messed up and stuff like that. And then you just go work on it. Do you think you're the fastest on the team? Oh, yeah. I think I'm the fastest. <laughs> I know I'm the fastest. How I got about it? 10 different gears. <laughs> and he was three of them. <laughs> yeah. How does the team speed compare to what you saw at uh, USF? Oh, we way faster. Really? I be out there tired a little bit. I ain't going to say a little bit. I do be tired. <laughs> yeah. What's impressed you so far about Travis Hunter, just the ability to play both sides of the ball? See, I was hanging out with Travis off the field. That man now he's a true athlete. Like everything y'all see, Travis really like that. That's my dog too. Travis like that. What are his ball skills like? Crazy. Catching everything. Radius off the chain. <laughs> Telling me everything he go catch me. You faster than him too? Yeah, I'm blessing that. <laughs> Jimmy, what NFL players you watch growing up and who do you try to adapt to your game? Uh I used to watch. When, tell you the truth, I used to watch Coach Prime when I was in part one. I used to wear number 21. And uh, I used to like watching Devin Hester. He, we, we say almost just alike. Um, I used to watch a lot of running backs, like Bo Jackson, Barry Sanders. I really didn't watch too many receivers because I was more into running back when I was younger. But as I got older, I started looking at more receivers then. But I used to mainly watch running backs, like old school running backs. Me and my pops used to just sit down and watch like running backs and stuff like that. I know you worked here previously, but do you have any kind of sense the transformation this football program has gone through in the last three months with Prime's hiring and with bringing in guys like you and Travis and Shadur and other people? Yeah. Do you have a sense like what's happened here in the last three months and how much different it is than what it was and what's your reaction to it? Uh, one thing I know, they say like the food way better. Like the food, delicious. <laughs> like you eating at a five-star restaurant every day. I done ate so much steak, I'm tired of eating it. <laughs> but they say, but everything else, like, it's been a smooth transition overall, because when I was at USA, we kind of went through the same situation. So I'm still just making a bigger jump and adjusting to it, just to some of the players that's coming here, because we all coming from somewhere else, adjust to the same thing. But we go, we go get it down the pack, we go be all right. What do you like about working with Coach Bart alone? Coach Bart, he cool people, and uh, since he played the game too, he know the basis of it, so he could teach it. Jimmy, do you think you'll be returning kicks this year too, or are you going to be focusing more on wide receiver? No, I'm going to try to do everything I can do. I ain't turning down nothing. Yo, we here with wide receiver Jimmy. Jimmy Horn, actually. See, five. Fly number five. So I picked up the five. Because I had five in high school. And then I had five in part uh, one, which is Little League football. But I didn't really have more attention to why I wore it back then, but I just liked number five. And then as I got older, things happened in life. 
And then I lost five people that really mattered to me in my life and that really important to me. So I always had five pride in my career. Uh, so how do you feel about getting your number first? Yeah, I feel real for you, bro. I'm just humble with it. Everybody time coming to me. I ain't really like, I ain't really too happy, but I'm happy. Yeah, I work for it. Everybody got to work for it. Everybody still on. But man, so at the end of the day, still be snapped from you, so I ain't really taking it for granted, man. I'm just blessed to have you. Yeah. What's up? That's Coach said it. Jimmy Jam, Jimmy Horn Jr., J5, mic'd up today, and we about to work. So tune in, let's do it. Hey, 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 to the crib, to the crib. Hey, y'all boy gonna need to translate to understand what I'm saying. Hey, hey. Look at you, daddy. Look at coach. Look at your coach. Hey, hey, to the crib. He gonna be mad at us today, boy. Spin it. Hey. And I'm gonna start to start that bit on the middle and just run straight up the scene. Put the camera on Brie Law, so the battle with the huge. <laughs> yeah. And now to wrap it up for practice. Five gone, four, seven, now I'm not dirt. Bokey baby, trim made. Five by, J5 gone. It's time to get to know some of the brand new Colorado Buffaloes and Coach Bryant's football team. Voice of the bus, Mark Johnson, Jimmy Horn Jr. joining us, wide receiver for Colorado. Yes, well, first true. off, how you liking Buffalo of Boulder so far? Man, I love Boulder, man. Yeah. The weather amazing. Yeah. Like the only big difference is that this uh, what they call it, the altitude and the uh, humidity is crazy. <laughs> right. right. All this running, I'd be tired, but you know, I just gotta fight through it. <laughs> Yeah. Now, now, you being from Florida, have you ever been out this way at all? No, nah, I never, I never been up here except on my visit. Okay. Yeah. Why Colorado? I mean, uh, you know, Coach Prime, I'm assuming, is a big, big part yeah. of that. But to tell us about that transferring from South Florida to here. Uh, it go like right, me and Coach Prime, we go way back because in high right? school I was about to go to Jackson State. Okay. But I had one to uh, USF with my quarterback out of yeah. uh, out of uh, Seminole High School. We both went to USF, and then he left. So. I can't hear with Coach Prime when they made the move. So it was on it was only right for me, you know. Yeah. yeah. Seminole High School, Sanford, Florida. Tell us about your family. You got a lot of brothers and sisters? Yeah, I got five. I got five total siblings. But mm -hmm. me, that makes six total. Okay. So I got four, four sisters, <laughs> one little brother, and then there's me, Jimmy uh -huh. Horn. Are you you're the oldest? No, I'm, I'm the second oldest. Second my, oldest. My first oldest, she she is in the military up there in Utah. Her name is Tate. Okay. And then my uh I got three three other sisters. She, one of them, which one the older? Tough to keep track of all of them. I'm telling you, I got to keep track. Toon, <laughs> the, the third oldest. And then there's Nora, she the fourth. Okay. And then Soraya, that's my that's my daddy's daughter. So she on my part side, she the youngest. And then my little brother, he the youngest on my mama's side. And then on the second oldest on my mom's side. Okay. Right. <laughs> they know what's up though. Were, were you always a wide receiver? Uh, played I played running back, I played played? running back, receiver, okay. a little bit of cornerback, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Okay. I played quarterback too. I don't have to think you were a track yeah. guy at some point. Yeah, I ran you? track too. I, I bet track. you were. I yeah. mean, you had to be a speed guy. I ain't really track track series though. Is that right? If I'd have took track series, I probably could have ran yeah. an easy 10 too. I just never had no good start out the blocks. Right. Yeah. Well, what's the key to being a good receiver? Uh, you got to know like coverages. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to catch. Uh, good ball adjustment, um, and then you and your quarterback got to be on the same page. Yeah. And then you got to have good route running skills. You know, Coach Prime's always saying he's, he's talking about I'm I'm looking for dogs. And, yeah. And, and you got to be a dog when when that ball's up with you. That ball's got to be yours. Oh, yeah. You got it. It's me versus me mentality. That's yeah. all it is to it. Anything else, it's either me, it's either me or you ain't getting it. That's how I see it. What is it about Coach Prime? What, what, what attracted you to him? I mean, obviously, he's a great yeah. athlete, an iconic figure, but what, what is it about that relationship? Uh, you know, Coach Prime, he played a little receiver. He did everything. So yeah. just being able to be up under his wings and him, like, as another father figure besides my pops, like, he a good dude, so you can't you can't outbeat that. And then plus, like, like I say, going back, back in high school, you know, they recruited me, so they already. And then they came back out the portal looking for me, so 
I couldn't turn that down, you know. Ooh. It is great having you. We can't wait well, to see you on the field. Sure, man. All right. Yes, sir. Jimmy Horn Jr., a brand new Colorado Buffalo for Coach Prime. All right. Appreciate y'all.